All right, guys. <laughs> this sermon is a, a little different. Uh, the name of this sermon is going to be called My Baby's Got a Secret. Now, that probably sounds familiar to some of you. Uh, it is a song. Uh, well, it's lyrics from a song. The name of the song is Secret by Madonna. It's one of her older songs. But sure enough, that's what we're going to be talking about in this message is secrets, but more in particular, secrets that should be revealed before either getting in a relationship or before taking a relationship to the next level, possibly marriage. So that's what I want to get into, and I'm, I'm just kind of tickled right now because I'm sure some of you are watching uh, if you're watching on video instead of listening just to the audio stream, you're watching me right now, and you see I've got <laughs> I've got this uh, these dog ears and these leather straps around my face. It makes this uh, BDSM type uh, mask that I'm wearing, <laughs> and some of y'all are probably looking at me like, "What in the world is going on?" You're probably a little bit creeped out. Don't be creeped out. I will explain why I'm wearing this mask, these dog ears, a little bit later in the sermon. So just hold tight. It'll make sense. Some of you, you probably already know where this is going. Bless y'all's hearts. So, so anyway, with that said, again, the name of this is My Baby's Got a Secret. So in this sermon, there are about seven different things. Now, there are many things. But there are seven things that came to mind getting ready for this sermon. Seven things that are things that may be hidden or kept a secret by people. And it's understandable, but they are seven things that it is probably a really good idea to let the person that you're involved with or wanting to be involved with know. Because some of these things can be deal breakers. Some of these things are things that will make people think twice about marriage or even just a simple relationship. These are things that need to be discussed. And I'm not saying that you have to always be quick to put your business on front street with any and everybody. But what I'm saying is there are some things that when it comes to relationships, you really can't uh, keep it hidden for very long, or at least you shouldn't. Because you may end up hurting the other person. And so that's what I want to get into. Secrets, certain secrets that you really do need to share. Not necessarily with any and everybody, but with those uh, close to you that you love, that you want to take things to the next level with. So if you're following along in scripture, go ahead and go to the book of Ruth. Uh, not a whole lot of uh, different scriptures to jump back and forth to in this sermon. Just one particular area. It's just going to be Ruth chapter 1 verses 1 through 17. And I'm going to use this text to focus on uh, secret number one that certain people have. Because it's the big thing. It's probably the biggest uh, secret that needs to be dealt with when it comes specifically to Christian relationships. This is something that, that you know, it, it's, it's got to be put out there. It's got to be brought forth. It's got to be uh, laid out on the table. It's just something that has to be discussed in a Christian relationship, especially prior to marriage. It is something that cannot be kept a secret. It should not be because you're just asking for trouble. So, we're going to get into number one right after reading this. And then I'll quickly go through the last six of the seven. This shouldn't be too long of a message, but definitely an interesting one. So Ruth chapter one, starting at the beginning. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm so entertained myself right now. I know some people are watching thinking, oh my gosh, I can't believe she's doing this right now. But there are some of you that if you've been watching me long enough, it really shouldn't be too outside of the box because you know you know sometimes I like to discuss things that other people in the church world may not want to discuss because it may make people uncomfortable it may you know you know what I mean it, it may be a touchy subject or whatever but I, I like going there so here we are 
we're there today. Now, I'm going there. I'm just already there. Right at the beginning of the sermon with the mask on, with the, with the dog ears on. We're already just treading on interesting territory already at the start of this. So anyway, Ruth chapter 1, starting at the beginning, it says this. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Malon and Chilion, Ephraithites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. And Milan and Chilion died also, both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband, and she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughters-in-law with her. And they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them. And they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will ye go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb, that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say, I have hope. If I should have a husband also tonight, and should also bear sons, would ye tarry for them till they were grown? Would ye stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice, and they wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her now before i finish these last few verses let me say this real quick let me just kind of recap what we've just read especially for those that may not have scripture in front of them let me just kind of recap so in this story we've got this woman named naomi naomi has a husband she's got two sons and her two sons get married, so now she's got two daughter-in-laws. Now, things may seem to be all right, but all of a sudden, it just seems like she has loss after loss. She's losing a lot of things. She loses her husband. He dies. She loses her sons. And now she's got these two daughter-in-laws who are looking up to her for leadership and, and, and ways to, to live and to survive. And she's at a place where she's just like, you know, she's she's like, you know, I, I really can't take care of myself with my situation because I have no husband. I have no sons anymore. And I'm out here in this strange land. You know, I moved from from where I'm from. You know, I'm just at a disadvantage. I don't have much going on for me. It's like my life is dry and barren. I don't really have much to show for, for the years that I've put in and, and, and for what I've uh, uh, tried to do in my life. You know, I just ain't got much going on. Maybe it's time for me to just go on and head back home. I hear things are a little bit better where I'm from. Maybe I should just skedaddle. And so she is trying to talk to her daughter-in-laws and she's telling them, listen, you know, I'm going to go, you guys go back to, you know, where y'all were from before we all linked up. You know, I wish y'all the best. 
and they start crying. They, they, they don't want to leave Naomi's side. Uh, Orpah and Ruth don't want to leave their mother-in-law Naomi's side. So Naomi, she's trying this again, and she's like, look, <laughs> uh, uh, y'all, I, I mean, I'm old in age, and you know what? Even if I did get pregnant, are y'all going to you know, hang around and wait? For me to have the babies and wait for the babies to grow up to be grown men and marry them. You know you know what I mean? Like, she, she's trying it again. She's like, look, it's not worth it. I ain't got nothing to give you. I ain't got nothing to offer you. I really can't help you much. It, you know, you would be much better off just going and, and, and just making your own way. You know, I, I can't really provide for you. I really can't do much for myself right now. You know, just just, just go ahead and go. And it says that they wept again, but Orpah kissed her mother-in-law. Or as we would say today, she, she kissed her goodbye. She was finally willing to accept this, and so she's ready to move on. It says, but Ruth claved to her. Ruth was not going to let her go. And so let's see what it says in 15, 16, and 17. So 15 says this, And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. So she's saying, Naomi is saying to Ruth, Listen, your, your sister, she's gone. She's accepted what I'm saying. She has gone back to her, her people and to her gods. Little G, by the way, and it has an S on the end. Now, as I've explained many times before, the God of the Bible is the one true living God. And then you've got these false gods, these idols. Our God is capital G. No S at the end because he's the one true living God. Yes, there is the Trinity. There's Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the three in one. But it's still one God. But you've got people who they believe what they believe. They maybe don't believe in God or they've got a different God or many gods that they serve. And, you know, she's dealing with people, these, these daughter-in-laws that are from Moab. You know, they're Moabites. They're not the children of Israel. They've got their gods that they were worshiping and serving until they, they come into the picture. And maybe they still were. I don't know. But she's telling them or, or she's telling Ruth now because Orpah's out of the picture. She's telling Ruth, listen, go ahead and go back to your people and your gods. Little G S on the end. In other words, go back to your customs. Go back to whatever it is you knew, whatever it is you were doing before. I'm going back to my people where my God is, is making a move. My God, he, he's, he, his hand is moving back in my homeland. I got to go back there. Maybe I'll have a somewhat better of a chance at life there than here. Now, let's keep reading, and, I, and, and I'm emphasizing that for a reason, the whole little g, s on the end. There's a reason why, and we're going to get to it. Verse 16, it says, And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. Now, check this out. This is what Ruth is saying to Naomi. She says this, For whether thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if, if, aught, be, if aught but death part thee and me. So Ruth is saying, no, I'm going to keep following you. I want to stay with you. She says, wherever you go, I want to go. Wherever you stay, I want to stay. Whoever your people are, they're my people now. Your God is my God. And she also goes on to say, wherever you die, I'll die. And I'll be buried there as well. And she's basically saying, there at the end, till death do us part. Now this may not have meant something romantic at the time. But for us, these are romantic words. These are things that are said in, in marriage vows, right? When people get married. Till death do us part. In sickness and in health, no matter what the situation, we're going to be together and we're going to tough this out till death do we part, right? That's, that's how we go about things. So she's saying, she's, she's, she's laying it out there for Naomi and letting her know, listen, no matter what, I'm going to be there. Kind of like how a lot of people today 
she's like, you know what? I'm going to be your ride or die chick. No, <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But seriously, though, that's what it says. Like she's saying, I'm your ride or die chick. I'm going to ride with you until we die. No, it turned into a rap video at this moment. No, I'm just playing. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway little hip hop moment, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, she's saying I'm, I'm with you all the way. But what I really want to emphasize is that part at the end of 16 where she says, thy God, my God, your God, my God. And what I want to point out is she says it. And if you look, it's with a big G, a capital G and no S at the end. Not your gods are my gods. Your God is my God, big G. So what am I getting at here? First of all, we see that even though Ruth may have a past just because of where she's from, where she's born, being a part of the Moabites, not being a part of the people of God, we know that she has a past of which her people had their gods, little g, s at the end. But she's saying to Naomi, your God will be my God. In other words, she said, she's showing that she acknowledges that there's a difference between what she may have once served and the God that Naomi is serving. So she's showing that she sees that it's not the same. She's showing respect not only to Naomi, but to the God that she, sh that she serves and she's showing it. She's letting her know, I get it. There's a difference. This is the one true living God. No S. Big G. And she says, your God will be my God. That's a big statement because she could just say, well, whatever your God, little G is, I will worship your God. I will, I will uh, uh, read about your God. I'll learn about your God. I'll pray to your God. No, she takes it from your God and makes it my God. She personalizes it and makes it my God. That's a big thing. Because what she's basically saying is, I'm not going to just go through the motions. Come on. She's saying, I'm going to go after a relationship with this God myself, not just try to ride in on the relationship you may have with your God. Not just, well, I'll, I'll talk to your God and I'll do this for your God. No, your God will now be my God and I will worship my God. I will pray to my God, not just yours, but my God, big G, no S at the end. That right there, and, and some of you, you may not have even really thought that through the way I've explained it, but now it's hitting you. That right there is a big statement because because Ruth or sorry, Naomi was just letting them know, hey, I know you guys have y'all's quote unquote uh, gods. And right here, Ruth is like, no, your God is my God. I will have as much love and respect for your God, which will now be my God, as you. So she's basically showing, hey, it's no secret. I know my past. I know what I've been into. But I love you so much that I am willing to make a change. I am willing to repent from what I used to serve to serve the one true living God. Because I'm willing to make this work. And I mean this with all my heart, even to the point to where de till death do us part. So why do I bring this up? Why do I emphasize this? I'm using that to, to make this point about uh, secret number one that people have oftentimes in, in Christian relationships. And you see I'm doing the, the, the quotation marks with my fingers when I say Christian relationships because sometimes in these Christian relationships, one of the two people are not even really a Christian and they know it. And that leads me to number one on the list of secrets that must be revealed. Hiding number one because I've got the list here on my computer screen that I typed up. Number one, hiding not being a Christian. 
hiding not being a Christian. Believe it or not, and some of y'all know this to be true, but believe it or not, there are people who if they like you, if they're, they're crazy about you, if they're in love with you, they'll be in a relationship with you. They'll know that you're a Christian. And they know that it's important to you to also be with another Christian. But they won't be. They, they, they won't believe in God. They won't believe in the Bible. But they'll still be with you. But not reveal to you that they don't believe what you believe. Yeah, really, there really are people that really will do this. They know it's a big deal for you. They know it's a deal breaker. They know that if they that if you knew up front that they didn't believe like you believed, that you, you would just shut them down. You wouldn't give them a chance or you would break off the relationship that y'all did have. So they would keep it a secret and they would wait to the worst of times to try to reveal to you that they don't even believe. You may say, well, how does this play out? Well, there's different ways that they may go about doing this. Some, and these are some of the signs. Maybe, you know, you're, you're, you're spending time with somebody, you're going out on dates, you're hanging out with them, y'all are getting close, and you try to have real deep conversations with them, and every time you talk about God, church, the Bible, religion in general, maybe they do things like, they don't, they don't say nothing. They'll talk about everything else, but they don't have nothing to say, or they just kind of nod their head to whatever you say, or they'll change the subject, or they go from not being hungry to eating, so that way they don't really, you know, they can use that as an excuse for not talking. But it seems like a reoccurring thing where they keep kind of dodging the issue the best that they can, or... Some will even do this because some may have been uh, uh, raised in the church so they know scripture, they know what to say, so they'll, they'll actually have conversations with you about things in the Bible or about church and God because they know it, but at some point in their life they decided to simply not believe it, so they'll, they'll play the game. They'll play the game. They'll pretend the whole time. Oh, yeah, man, yeah, that, that verse, man. Yeah, that, man, I, I remember I heard a sermon on that one time, man. I remember uh, that one guy at that one church, Pastor So-and-so, he said blah, blah, blah. They'll have a whole conversation with you numerous times about things, but not just flat out say, you know, yeah, I know all this stuff. I was raised in all this stuff, but I just I, I don't believe in it anymore. And they will purposely go for weeks, months, maybe even years, without telling you this and then finally when they got you right where they want you they finally reveal that they don't believe it like right before or right after y'all get married now all of a sudden they get frustrated when you talk about it and you're trying to figure out why suddenly they're frustrated when you bring up these subject matters or frustrated when uh, you, you you want them to go to church with you and this that and the other and then you you wonder why they're mad and they're frustrated and why you know, they, they didn't mind talking about this stuff before, but now they're butt hurt. And then finally they just blow up and they just let you have it and reveal to you that they don't believe. And you're sitting there thinking, what? what? You know what I mean? And it bothers you because you know that they know this is a big deal to you, that this is a possible deal breaker, but they've allowed this to play out for so long to just wait till now to reveal it. And what happens is sometimes people will do this on person because they're banking on you to fold. In other words, they're, they're hoping that you get so in love with them. And what they're basically doing, whether they realize it or not, is they're just they're, they're trying to form that good soul tie with you. So that what, what ends up happening is when they finally do let the cat out of the bag and reveal the truth, you'll, you'll just kind of settle. You'll just, even though you know that you don't want to, you know, fornicate, you don't want to maybe move in and live as, as, a, as a couple or as a family without getting married first. You'll settle and go ahead and do it anyway because you're thinking, well, I, I know marriage is going to be the right route before taking it to this extreme, but they don't want this and I'm too in love with them, so I'll just, I'll just settle. I'll just, you know, let them move in and, you know, we'll just live together, have a family, just... We just won't be married. And that's what some people are banking on. If they hold out long enough and you're in love with them enough, you'll just go ahead and just settle. Even though you know God would want otherwise, they're hoping that you'll just go ahead 
and bend and break and give in and just right that there are some, listen some some people that's that's what they do so that's what they'll do so now number two on the list is this of so secrets that that needs to be revealed is not be not believing in marriage so you've got people who hide that they're not Christians but then you have people who will hide that they don't even believe in marriage at all and some of you know this you 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 be in a relationship with somebody for a long time you'll bring up marriage you'll bring up how you want the wedding to play out you'll bring up you know what how you want your life to be after marriage you talk about these things and just like how I was talking about the person that hides that they're not a Christian it's the same way you have a conversation with them about marriage and the same thing they'll just sit there and just listen or they'll just kind of nod their head to what you're saying or they'll just change the subject a little bit or you know just just dodging it just dodging it or they give you some type of bland response and then finally years later <laughs> when are we going to get married well you know to be honest i don't believe in marriage and they ain't been believing in it this whole time it's just like what <laughs> so you got those that are, aren't christians and don't want to tell you and then those that don't believe in marriage so if you continue to go along with it either with either number one or number two the, the the goal is to get you to just settle really settle without getting married or settle with somebody who is not a christian now some of you may be thinking well what's what's the big deal so what if somebody falls in love with somebody who's not a christian the thing about it is this when it comes to marriage and of course i'm not a marriage expert but we all in christianity if you've been in this long enough you know the importance of being equally yoked you don't want to marry somebody and not be equally yoked because if jesus is the foundation for your household for your marriage for your family and it's not the foundation for the other person it's like building a house on a very uneven uh, foundation what happens if y'all decide to have kids and you're trying to raise them one way and and they're trying to raise them a totally different way so now you've got conflict you've got chaos in the household and jesus said a house divided cannot stand so anyway but it is what it is people are going to do what they're going to do but i would say that if you feel like you're in a situation where you're with somebody who doesn't believe in, in uh, marriage or doesn't they're not a christian they don't believe in the word you should definitely sit down and have this conversation or maybe the reason you're hearing this message is because you are with somebody who may be about to reveal to you that secret and if that's the case brace yourself because if that ends up being you and it's somebody revealing that secret to you you've got to make the right choice and you know what the right choice for you is you know what the right choice is you've got two choices to make one is the the one that's going to be right in god's eyes and the other won't be so good but you know which one is the right choice in the lord's eyes you know what's supposed to be right for you but it's up to you to go about that the right way either you can settle or you can do what's right with that said maybe it's the other way around maybe you're not the one that is going to hear the secret maybe you're the one that needs to be revealing the secret in other words you know maybe you're somebody maybe you don't believe in marriage or maybe you're not a christian and maybe some of y'all are thinking well why would somebody who doesn't believe in the word be tuning into this sermon well you never know stuff happens maybe somebody else is watching this video or listening to this audio and somebody beside them right now might be that person who is hiding that secret and maybe they're hearing this and 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 maybe the holy spirit you never know you never know god might be kind of poking at that person's heart a little bit like come on now come on out with it now <laughs> you know let's get this ball rolling now let's not be wasting nobody's time don't be wasting my children's time with your lies come on now so maybe maybe it's you that's got to reveal it maybe maybe you, you you know you just heard that somebody did a wacky crazy sermon wearing a 
uh, 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 mask with dog ears and you decided to tune in not because you're a believer but because you wanted to be entertained and now this is the point of the sermon where you're just like dang I wish I had not turned this on but it's for you so you <laughs> but you tuned in so ha 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 I ca -ca -ca. so <laughs> so get to confessing anyway you go you're gonna have to turn into usher you're gonna have to have confessions but anyway so now, <laughs> now number three on the list of secrets that should be revealed prior to taking things to the next level in a relationship or probably before even starting one in the first place number three is uh the fact that you may have had a sex change now <laughs> Let me say this for those listening right now. This is definitely a point in the sermon where if you haven't figured it out by now, we're going to start getting into heavier, deeper stuff that may make people feel a little bit uncomfortable. So by the end of this, I'm really going to be talking about some stuff that's going to make some people a little bit squirmy. But for for some of you that can handle it, you'll definitely enjoy what I have to say. But I'm just letting you know in advance, you know, don't say I didn't warn you. But just brace yourself. So, number three, hiding that you have had a sex change. Now, let me say this. If you pay much attention to things going on in the news, and I'm not necessarily talking about mainstream media, but just things like if you're the type of person you watch a lot of news online, video clips online, or, or, or articles online, you probably hear a lot or read a lot about... Uh, transgender women not saying that this doesn't happen to guys but especially this really happens to transgender women you may have women who uh, or guys who they've they started to get ready to undergo having a sex change or something like that they're becoming a woman and what may end up happening is they may pursue a relationship with a guy and a guy doesn't know that this person has had this sex change and you know this person who's had the sex change they may try to pursue this relationship and it plays out for a while and so then they finally get to the point where they're they're ready to uh reveal the secret or maybe they feel like they have to reveal the secret because other people that know their past is trying to reveal the secret to their current uh lover and and things get haywire and we, we see in the news a lot of times that uh, a lot of these uh, uh, people that have transitioned to a woman, they get killed. And a lot of times, it, you know, sometimes it's just it's a it's a hate crime. Somebody's prejudice against them and they just they just want to hurt them. But sometimes in some of these instances, it's because of this very thing right here. And this is something that doesn't get talked about enough. A lot of times what will happen is. You know, they go and then they get in a relationship with somebody and not want to reveal to that to that person that, hey, I wasn't born this gender. I had this sex change. And then the person gets mad and, and may try to hurt them, may try to even kill them. And, and sometimes uh, these instances that we hear about on the news is from that it stems from keeping the secret from somebody for so long and then that person hurting them. Because that person is worried about what other people think about them dating somebody who used to be the same sex as them. It, they, they get freaked out by what people think and they don't want people thinking of them a certain way. Because they know there are going to be people that are thinking, well, wait a minute. What if this, this person is somebody who maybe... They're, they're in the closet. Maybe they're secretly, you know, into guys. So what they did was they went out and found a guy that is dressing like a woman or who is going to undergo a sex change, but they, they haven't fully gotten all the, the, <laughs> the parts changed over just yet. So this is their way of, of having a good time with, with a guy, but it just being under wraps, so to speak. And so they start worrying about what other people are going to think about them and their sexuality and what they like and what turns them on. So they'll freak out. And one of the things that they do is they resort to violence, kicking, punching, stabbing, shooting, and carrying on. So this is something, and, and I get it, Maybe if you're somebody who you're in the middle of transitioning, you're in the middle of the, 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 the different operations, or maybe you've 
finally finished having your operations, your surgeries. I get that you may not want any and everybody to know your past. You you just want to move forward. You don't want to be reminded that you used to be this and now you're that. That's your business. But please understand, especially with what we see with all the violence going on, that it might not be a bad idea to be careful to know ahead of time if the person that you want to be with is going to be okay with this. Don't wait to uh, till a very inconvenient time to where y'all have officially become a couple, uh, you know, or, or, or maybe they're talking about putting a ring on it and proposing to try to reveal to that person something that you know that if they find out, it's going to be a deal breaker. They're not going to want to go to the next level. Or you're scared that somebody else is going to reveal it. Don't let somebody else be the first to reveal it. So this is something else that you may want to say sooner rather than later. So quick recap. Number one, hiding not being a Christian. Number two, not believing in marriage. Number three, had a sex change. Now number four, number four is using someone to look heterosexual with the intent of a breakup. This is what I mean. There are some people who they're gay, they're in the closet, and they have no desire to ever come out. And that's their business. And they decide, you know, I want to be in a heterosexual relationship. I want to play the role. I don't want, you know, any judgment coming my way. I don't want people messing with me. I don't want any of that. I don't want to, you know, take the risk of, of what may come against me if I come out. I just want to just stay in the closet. I just want to just, just, just live the stereotypical American dream, you know, marry somebody of the opposite sex, have kids, have the house with the picket fence and 2.5 kids, and the dog, and the cat, and, and you know you know what I mean? They just want to just live just the, the regular, stereotypical life. Okay, that's their business. Or, this is something else that happens, by the way. Sometimes, what will happen is, a woman that's gay and a guy that's gay, they'll both know that each other's gay, but they what they want to do is, they both want to pretend to be straight, so they'll both make the deal to both uh, be in a relationship, right, and, and just, just pretend to be straight together. And that's, they feel like that's the best way to do it because behind closed doors, you know, they're, they're not pretending with a straight person who's going to expect them to have sex with them since they are both in on each other's little secret. They don't, they don't have to worry about actually having sex. You know, they don't have to worry about being with somebody that's going to expect sex, and then when they don't give it to them, that, that person's going to question them and be like, well, why do you not want to do it? You know, you don't, you're not going to want to say, well, you know, I'm secretly gay, and I'm not really attracted to you, because then that's, that's going to ruin the whole thing. But if, you're, but if it's two people of the opposite sex, but they're both gay and they're both in on the secret, that's just it. They're both in on it. They don't have to pretend in private they just pretend in public that they're in love and in private they're just like best friends hanging out you know <laughs> that's their business that's their business but the problem is when you have someone who is gay and they do want to come out in fact they may even have it planned out I'm going to do this first and I'm going to take care of this right here and then when I get done with this I'm going to have I'm going to come out of the closet I'm going to you know finish up school here and then when I graduate and get away from these people then I'm going to come out of the closet you know I you know I my family, they're a bit homophobic, so I'm going to do what I got to do here. And then when I move away and I detach from everybody, then I'm going to come out of the closet. Well, you know, I come from this hometown where people, you know, <laughs> people are, are pretty prejudiced. But I know if I go to that town or to that state, they're a little bit more open. So I'm just going to stay in the closet here and I'm going to find an excuse as to why I got to move away. And then when I move away, I'm going to come out of the closet. And that's cool. That's cool. But what, what they do sometimes is this, while they are in that position of waiting until they can get somewhere where they feel like they can be themselves, what they'll do is they'll get into a relationship with somebody and they're basically using that person. They, 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 they find somebody of the opposite sex, they get with them, 
They get with them for the purpose of looking straight with everybody, and they just tell them how much they love them and they care and da 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 da. They go through all the, the the motions. They're good to them. They take them out and you know take them shopping, take them out to eat, tell them how much they love them. They spending time together, spending time at each other's homes and meeting each other's parents and going to each other's family's homes for dinner and I mean all just the whole nine yards. All let me. Tell take you to church let's go worship the lord together baby they go through all this go through the motions with this person have this person really in love with them and then when the opportunity comes for them to get out of where they are to get where they were where they feel like they can get out of the closet then they reveal to that person well you know i got a secret to tell you i'm gay and you know i you know but i'm I'm fixing to get ready to leave so we might as well break up okay bye And it happens, and some of you probably have seen this play out. They already had it in their mind that when they find the right opportunity to get out of a place or situation or whatever, where they feel like they can get out of the closet, they've already got it planned out that when they do this, when they get this opportunity, they're going to leave the person that they may fall in love with them high and dry. So they had it planned out from start to make that person fall in love with them, knowing that when they, when because they're being an opportunist, they know when the opportunity comes, it's going to be good for them. They're going to jump ship and hurt that person's feelings and not give a crap. That right there is very manipulative, very deceitful. That is not a secret that you want to keep. Especially if you're in a situation where you're going to marry someone knowing later, knowing later that you're going to get a divorce at the best opportune time. Don't take something so far with someone that you make them fall in love, maybe even propose, maybe even have a plan to marry them temporarily. Just to break their heart. Don't fall in love or get that person to fall in love. Have kids with them. Go the the, the whole nine yards with them. Knowing that you're just going to leave them at a certain moment. And just act like it's not even a big deal. Act like they're just being over dramatic and over emotional. Because they're crying and upset about it. And say stuff like that. Say stuff like, "Oh well, you you heard you heard about me. You heard rumors about me. You should have you should have believed what you heard. I, I I I you know I don't feel bad for you. You should have you should have knew. What what do you mean? You've been sitting there denying rumors and playing this act, and now when you break their heart, you try to make them feel stupid. You try to make them feel like they should have knew better, and it's their own fault." This is not a secret to keep from somebody. Hey, I'm gay and I'm just using people. I run through people and use them to look straight until the right moment. Don't be that person that has that secret. Number five, having an affair. That's pretty self-explanatory right there. That's that's not a secret you want to keep. You shouldn't do that at all anyway. Having an affair is not something you want to do anyway, but... That's not a secret you want to keep, especially when you know somebody else is fixing to get ready to reveal it. You don't want somebody to have to find out from somebody else. You shouldn't do it anyway, but you really don't want them to find out from somebody else before you. Moving on, number six, having an incurable sexually transmitted disease. That's also something pretty self-explanatory. That's something you got to reveal. Even if, listen, even if you're not even really trying to go that far as marriage or a deep relationship. Uh, I remember years ago, I saw in, in a newspaper about this woman who she had been messing around with this guy. And they, they weren't together. They were It was basically like a friends with benefits type thing. She was seeing a guy who, you know, he was messing around with different people just, just for fun. It was an agreement that they had to just mess around sometimes. This guy had went and got himself checked out and knew for a fact he had an STD and was taking some medicine for it. But he didn't reveal it to this woman. So the woman, over time, after, you know, going back and forth to his house, messing around with him one day, 
she is snooping around into some of his medications and sees that he's been taking medicine for an STD. She confronts him about it and he finally admits it. She goes, gets checked out and finds out, sure enough, that she has contracted this disease from this man. Because he was not honest up front. Now, people will just do that to you, man. But this is not something that you want to keep a secret from somebody that you want a relationship with, that you want to be intimate with. That's not, that's not cool. Finally, last on the list. Ah, man. Number seven. Let me say this real quick. This is about to get interesting. Brace yourself. I'm giving you a warning up front that, that this is the big one. Hopefully you don't get too uncomfortable. But if you don't want to hear things that uh, may be considered a bit taboo, this might be a good time to say, okay, I got the point of the sermon. <laughs> and it's time for me to just go ahead and click that off button. But if you want to keep staying tuned, awesome. Number seven on the list, last one is having a sexual fetish or kink, specifically BDSM. Now you see why I'm wearing the, <laughs> the leather mask with the dog ears. Let me explain what this is about. So <clears throat> fetish, the word fetish can mean different things, but in the context of a sexual fetish or a kink, it just basically simply means that you that you have something uh, out of out of the usual, out of the ordinary that may be a turn on for you. Now, what does BDSM mean? Now, I gotta be honest with you. I I, I can't I can't remember always off the top of my head what those letters stand for. I mean, I usually just explain what it is versus trying to tell somebody what the letters stand for. But I went and looked it up so that way I could just read it to you. <laughs> so BDSM, the letters are a blend of B and D, D and S, and S and M. B and D stands for bondage and discipline. D and S, D and S stands for dominance and submission. S and M stands for sadism and masochism. So here's the definition of it. A BDSM, sexual preferences and behaviors involving physical restraints and unequal power relationship or pain, including the practice of bondage, discipline, dominance, submission, and sadomasochism. So you might be thinking, some of y'all know what it is, some of you might be thinking, I still don't get it. I'll just simplify it for you. <clears throat> Basically what it is is this. It's when people like things that can cause restraint or pain or what some people would view as something a little humiliating as a turn on and it can or doesn't have to but it can lead up to sex it's something that people may use for foreplay or even just for fun but it may be things like this I'll give you some examples maybe it's someone that simply likes being handcuffed to the bed and and maybe they like being chained to something. Maybe they like being hog tied in rope. Maybe it's something along the lines of experiencing pain like being whipped with a belt or with an actual whip or a flogger or, or a horse whip or as some people call it a jump bat or a paddle like what the principal may have paddled you with in school if you got in trouble or maybe just a simple open-handed smack is good enough but <clears throat> enjoying pain as your pleasure being bound being tied up being a uh, uh, hit in a non-domestic violence sort of way not something that's considered abuse because both part partners or both parties have come to an agreement about it so it's not something against somebody's will but it's something that that someone wants and so I'll show you real quick if you got me on Facebook you probably already <laughs> seen this because I posted a picture the other day but uh, these are some uh, tools here that I have not had the pleasure of using yet but hopefully 
uh, whenever I get married, I will. This is, these are things that I recently brought, uh, bought online, not only for props for the sermon, but because these are things that I've been wanting to buy for a while anyway. I, I haven't. I've just had them saved in my little wish list on Amazon, you know, <laughs> my little to the side uh, cart, because you got the cart where you want to buy something and the cart where you store stuff that you want to buy later. And I figured, well, I don't really have a reason to buy anything now. Uh, you know, not married yet, so no point in having them. But I was like, I'm going to go ahead and get them, use them for the sermon. But this may make some people a little uncomfortable. But for some of you, this makes you very comfortable because not only are you seeing somebody that you know who may be into similar things, and so now you don't feel as weird. Now you don't feel like you're the only one. Now you don't feel like a weirdo. But also, it's helpful because some of you are watching somebody who you've probably seen for years preach, and many people don't get to see a preacher be honest about being into this sort of stuff, but realistically speaking, you would be surprised <laughs> just how many there are out there that would be into this sort of thing. So these are things that I am interested in. Of course, a paddle here, and this right here. Man, when I got this, I just stood there. I opened it up, and I stood there, and I just did this. I just started slapping my hand with it, just, ah, oh, that sounds good. But anyway, <laughs> but this is my jump bat right here, or, you know, a, a, a horse whip, as some would call it. It's just used to, if you see people riding horses, sometimes they'll use something like this to kind of smack the horse on the side to, to get it to, you know, speed up or slow down or whatever. But, ah, but anyway, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm excited about this one, but I'm really excited about this right here. I'm really excited about this jump bat. But anyway... So, <laughs> so, with that said, um, I hope that me showing you this and some of you seeing this side of me, which is probably a surprise to many of you, but I hope this kind of wakes some people up and helps some people realize, you know, this doesn't make you crazy. You know, you can be a very healthy-minded person and this can be your thing, but I will end this by uh, basically saying, number one, if this is your thing, of course, this is something that uh, you would eventually want to share because uh, to not share this and to go all the way and get married and everything, what this will probably do is it will open the door up for a lot of temptation. You know, you get with somebody who they don't want to do this at all and it, you shouldn't make them. But at the same time, if this is something that's a deal breaker for you, if this is something that you don't feel like it's going to work with somebody, if they're not into this and then you go ahead and you, you get with them anyway and you marry them anyway and you go all out, what happens when you're frustrated because you're not getting a, a, a need met, a desire met, and then you come across somebody who wants to do that and they're willing, then there's the door for temptation somebody knocking at the door of temptation trying to <laughs> you get what i'm saying so to avoid that it might not be a bad idea to share that secret but also i'll, I'll wrap this up by uh just simply sharing my experience because like i said i believe that even though this might make someone uncomfortable this will help somebody maybe somebody just Maybe this is somebody's thing and they're just timid about it. Well, I'll be honest with you. Let me share a little bit of my story real quick. Listen, I'll be honest. This is something that, that I have for sure been timid about. Uh, let me just start out by saying this. Uh, I, I learned when I was in school and then I really, really learned it when I was in college. I learned that I was very much into gothic girls. Now, I like different types of women. Don't get me wrong. But I, I noticed that I really had a thing for gothic women. The women, they, they dress in all black and they, you know, sometimes they might look kind of creepy to some folks. But boy, hmm, you know, got the, the piercings and sometimes the tattoos and they just, Rrr. but anyway, so <laughs> but I, I realized that. And so once I, and, and here we are with the power of the Internet, 
once I really uh, started to look into some things online about gothic culture, I ended up learning about dominatrixes. And some of y'all know what that is. Usually it's women. I, I mean, maybe guys do it too, but I know it's mainly women. And, and basically you can go to, to different places to meet up with dominatrixes. And basically they're women. A lot of times that's what they wear is black. Uh, specifically they'll wear like something leathery, you know, or something with straps or chains or whatever. whatever. But they'll be decked out in black and they'll have stuff similar to this that I'm holding now they they may have their own you know whips or whatever they use and basically you you go to wherever they're at you talk with them y'all sit down and talk and you tell them hey this is this is what my desire is this is what my fantasy is and they'll say okay you know uh, just let me know what you do and don't want to happen during this session and then after they get it all discussed uh, that person will pay that dominatrix baby basically to just you know beat them up now I'm just playing <laughs> to you know uh, to do whatever they want maybe they want to be whipped maybe they want to be tied up maybe they want the dominatrix to, to spit on them or tell them to get on their hands and knees and and, and and walk around like a dog or maybe they you know want to be choked or you know whatever it could be different things it could be hung upside down and 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 kicked while they're you know <laughs> hanging upside down and it doesn't have to be a thing that leads up to sex it can just be just of uh, the pain and the restraint just all that but but no sex you know or whatever it is that they may agree upon so it can be just that but that was always something that intrigued me, but I had never went to go see a dominatrix or anything. But it was always something that, that I was always curious about and looked into documentaries on it. But it was just something that always kind of fascinated me. And of course, if you learn about dominatrixes, you start to learn about BDSM. So that was always, for a long time, something that, that I always kind of just kept tucked in the back of my mind because I was always kind of timid about it and you know wasn't really sure what people would think but then last year somehow along the way I got to a point where I basically was just like okay this is my thing I'm not gonna be ashamed of it I'm not gonna you know feel uncomfortable about it it's just it's just something that I look forward to and so <laughs> So hopefully whenever I do get married, hopefully uh, the one that's for me will be into this sort of thing as well. And hopefully we'll have fun. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> but yes, so I thought I would share that. And to, to, to end this, I'll just say this real quick. So as I said, the name of this is My Baby's Got a Secret. And I said it was a, a Madonna song. Uh, I remember a while back I was watching some videos online on YouTube, I was just searching through the net, and some some uh, I saw some footage where people on the news were talking about how during some of Madonna's shows, during some of her live concerts, she was bringing people on stage, and she was having them bend over, and she was spanking them, and I'm sitting there thinking, you know, I view myself as the one doing the spanking, but being spanked by Madonna actually sounds really good and that right there was an aha moment for me and what I mean is this a lot of times we have an aha moment like the moment where the light bulb comes on where we realize something we may come to some realization of something about ourselves who we are what we like but then after the ah moment eventually you have the aha moment it's like that moment of confirmation that moment where you realize okay that wasn't just a phase it wasn't just something in my head that really was a real thing so i already had my ah moments but just just you know seeing Madonna spank some people and, and imagine myself in their shoes and, and just how I felt thinking about it. That was my aha moment. Like, oh, yeah. It, it, yeah, I'm just, I'm crazy. But anyway. <laughs>
<laughs> but I'm done. I'm done. We've had fun this sermon. This sermon ended up being longer than I thought, but whatever. It's cool. I hope that you all enjoyed it. It was definitely something different. I'll pray us out of here, Heavenly Father. I thank you for another time to minister another word. Lord, I pray that if there are secrets that people need to reveal to their lovers, to those that they want to go the distance with, that they may want to marry, Lord, I pray that people would just be honest, that people would know who they are and be honest about who they are and embrace who they are and that they would not keep secrets from people that would hurt people in the long run. Lord, let us just come out and just be honest, be real, get down to the bottom of, of things, get down to the nitty gritty of stuff and just be real. Lord, give us the courage and the strength to be who we are, but also the courage and the strength to walk away from certain situations and relationships that we know would not be good for us. Lord, I thank you. I give you the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.